Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Wednesday, March 20th, 2019. Take a look at our solar wind speeds at 400.5 kilometers per second with a density of 4.8. Still looking at AR2735, it appears to be decaying at this time, but we are also watching the possibility of AR2736 emerging, and with a minor C-class flare earlier this morning, we'll have more on that later with Mari. Sunspot number 15, still 53 days in 2019 without sunspots. Our KP indices are sitting at a two, and our 24-hour max is at a three. Our TSI reading for March 11th, 2019 came in at a 1360.6853. And let's have a look at the SDO in motion as we already had the geomagnetic unrest. It appeared to start uh, overnight last night. And we are now concentrating on the next coronal hole in the southern region of our star, which we should see the effects of that on March 26th. 2019 and tonight check out the full worm moon according to folklore tonight's full moon has a special name the worm moon it signals the coming of northern spring thawing earth and the first stirrings of earthworms in long dormant gardens step outside tonight and behold the awakening landscape worm moonlight is prettier than it sounds and a little bit more about these sunspots too the two sunspot groups are emerging on earth's facing side of the sun they are inset in this magnetic map of the sun from nasa's solar dynamics observatory sunspots are islands of magnetism floating on the surface of the sun like all magnets they have poles positive and negative sunspot ar 2735 has a simple bipolar magnetic structure that identifies it as a member of the old solar cycle 24. the other sunspot is yet unnumbered has a more complicated structure with multiple magnetic poles it is probably a member of old solar cycle 24 24 as well however the mixture of magnetic polarities makes it worth watching mixed polarity magnetic fields can crisscross and explode a process known as magnetic reconnection underlying solar flares as well and now here's Mari thank you Jake farmer Jeff Jurgensen looks out over 750 acres of cropland submerged beneath the swollen Missouri River and he knows he most likely will not plant this year but that's not his biggest worry. He and other farmers have worked until midnight for days to move grain, equipment, fuel barrels, all away from the floodwaters fed by heavy rain and snowmelt. The rising water that has damaged hundreds of homes and has been blamed for three deaths has also taken a heavy toll on agriculture, inundating thousands of anchors, threatening stockpiled grain, and killing livestock. In Fremont County alone, Jorgensen estimates that more than a million bushels of corn and nearly half a million bushels of soybeans have been lost after water overwhelmed grain bins before they could be emptied of last year's crop. Once it's deposited in bins, the grain is not insured, so it's just lost money. This year, farmers have stored much more grain than normal because of large crops last year. Vice President Pence surveyed flooded areas in Nebraska on Tuesday where he viewed the raging Elkhorn River, talked to first responders, and visited a shelter for displaced people. He promised expedited action on presidential disaster declarations for Iowa and Nebraska. Pence told volunteers at Waterloo, we're going to make sure that the federal resources are there for you. This is a town of less than a thousand residents, about 21 miles, that's 34 kilometers west of Omaha, that was virtually cut off by floodwaters. The flooding is expected to continue throughout the week in several states as high water flows down the Missouri River. Swollen rivers have already breached more than a dozen levees in Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri. The flooding in which started after a massive late winter storm last week has also put some hog farms in southwest Iowa underwater. The dead animals inside must be disposed of, Reynolds said. The water rose so quickly that farmers in many areas had no time to get animals out. Places that haven't seen animal loss have seen a lot of animal stress. That means they are not gaining weight and they won't be marketed in a timely manner, which results in additional cost. In all, Nebraska Farm Bureau President Steve Nelson estimated $400 million of crop losses from fields left unplanted or planted late and up to $500 million in livestock losses. 
In a press release issued Tuesday, Governor Pete Ricketts said there have been deadlier disasters in Nebraska, but never one as widespread. He said 65 of the state's 93 counties are under emergency declaration. The Missouri River was forecast to crest Thursday morning at 11.6 feet above flood stage in St. Joseph, Missouri, the third highest crest on record. More than 100 roads are closed in the state, including a growing section of interstate State 29. In nearby Atchison County, Missouri, floodwaters knocked out a larger section of an already busted levee overnight, making the village of Watson unreachable. Officials believe everyone got out before thousands of more acres were flooded, but so many roads are now closed that some residents must travel more than 100 miles out of their way just to get to their jobs at the Cooper Nuclear Station in Nebraska. It's a lot harder for people to get around. River flooding has also surrounded the northern Illinois neighborhood with water, prompting residents to escape in boats. People living in the Illinois village of Roscoe say children have walked through floodwaters or kayaked to catch school buses. This flooding has damaged dozens of homes and businesses. Again, the losses are huge. We're talking in the billions. Uh, that article we put out with 700 million is just one instance of the loss. Uh, we will definitely be keeping an eye on the prices and we'll keep you updated with any new information in regards to these catastrophic floods. If you like these short videos, please like and share. We'll be on live tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Again, thank you for tuning in to GSM. Have a great day.